today I want to talk about the Dehancer plugin. I definitely want to say it's the best thing ever created. Especially if you want to save time with color grading, this is a tool for you. Now by any means guys, I am not a professional colorist. I like to say that I know my colors and I just focus on that side and I focus on my strength. But I'm always trying to find ways to improve my colors and Dehancer has provided that for me. Next, I want to take you guys through the editing process on how I would use Dehancer. And mind you guys, it's really important to set your editing timeline correctly, especially if you are trying to achieve the best look and the most dynamic look as much as possible. You want to make sure you set that properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings and DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to scroll over to my settings. I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to my color management. I want to make sure my color size is DaVinci YRGB. And also my timeline color space DaVinci YG Intermediate. The reason why I want to keep it DaVinci YG Intermediate is because I want to make sure that I'm editing on a dynamic timeline. And the way if you can do that, your images will look more. Your images will look a little bit more, a little bit more different than just a regular Rec 709 timeline. And then the output color space Rec 709 A. Now, if you're editing on a PC, I believe the best outcome to that is Rec 709 2.4 or Gamma 2.4. Once you get that down, you want to go ahead and exit out. So I got my notes set up. First things first, guys, we want to make sure we, turn, we convert this to Rec 709 properly. I'm going to scroll to Color Space Transform. And In my input color space will be... Sony S Gamut 374 or Cine. Then we're going to go to S Log 3 because I shot this in S Log 3. My output color space will be a DaVinci Y Gamut. And then my output gamma will be DaVinci Intermediate. So you can tell it's pulled the highlights down a little bit, but we're not finished yet. We have to still convert that into Rec 709. Color space transform onto the Rec 709 node. My input color space is going to be DaVinci Y Gamut. Input Gamma would be DaVinci Intermediate. My output color space will be just the timeline itself. And then it, the output Gamma would be Rec 709. Remember, Rec 709A for MacBook. Cool, so this is before and after. Again, before and then after. I'm gonna go to my color space, Dimension Y Gamut. And I'm gonna go to my gamut here, and we have to Sony S Log 3. And then I can adjust the exposure here. Just like that. Perfect. Before I mess with the other nodes, I'm gonna go to the Dehancer Pro in the effects tab. Pull that over to that node. And I'm gonna work with that. I'm basically almost working backwards. This is how I kind of work. Now I'm in my Dehancer node at the moment. I'm gonna go here into the input. I'm gonna use DaVinci, I'm gonna use DVR, YG, Intermediate. As you can tell, the video has kind of flattened out, almost like if you're messing with the cur curves, it looks like that. In this input, you can also adjust the exposure here. You guys, there's so much tools to use. I would definitely say, like, I would like to see a tool here in Dehancer, maybe adjusting the curves, also maybe adjusting the highlights, like being able to control the highlight and the exposure as well, um, and like the shadows and the blacks. They do have the expand, expand slot here, but you can only adjust certain things, and I like to have a more flexibility in that. Definitely want to have capabilities of adjusting in the tones and also shadows. But it's okay, I really still think that Dehancer Pro is amazing. It's an amazing plugin and it's definitely a good way to add into your workflow and to get creative with that and also mix it up. So your film, you have different film choices that have different profiles. You also have your push and pull which is like the opacity. So you can go pull or push pull and push i do like to push a lot though so in this case i'm going to stick with just a kodak vision 3200d 
for daylight. Like I say, yeah, there's a lot of different profiles here. I want to stick with the Kodak itself. So back at it again with a 250. You also have your film developer. You can boost the contrast. The contrast is, you have to enable it. The contrast is really strong. Be careful with it. And then you also have that gamma correction. I want to go to the color boost because I think it's a lot better to see how the colors are changing. So I want to stick here. This is my gamma control. Oh yeah. This is, the gamma control is almost like the highlights. The way I see it, it's, it brightens up the image and it also pulls it down. So I like it right here. This is pretty good. You also have color separation. I almost can't tell the difference between the color separation. Definitely has a slight little subtle punch to it. I think that's what Dehancer is. They're more of a subtle plugin where it's not overdoing it or less. I'm gonna adjust the impact here. Of course, you're gonna enable that. You also have your white point. T tonal range it almost sort of flattens out the highlights the way I see it you also have your color density being able to disperse the colors out evenly I'm gonna bring the white point about right there now I'm gonna go to the expand S ever so slightly pull this black point down so after you're done with the film and you're also you're done with the input you want to scroll down to the print you want to click on the linear and then keep it Kodak 2383 print film. To me, it's just a better look and a lot of Hollywood, they use it. So when I did that, you can tell there's a lot of crushes in the blacks, how deep that is. I'm going to go back to the expand where the black points are. I'm going to reset that and then just slightly, ever so slightly adjust it and then adjust the white points as well. We're gonna go back to the print tab. You can also, here, I'm gonna adjust the target white. It is a little bit blown out. So we're gonna slightly drop it down to the negatives and the exposure. Now, if I enable analog range limiter, it's like lifting up the shadows with the curves. I might leave it that way. I may not. I do like my images more contrast and more punchy. The color head is actually one of my favorite. And then you can adjust the blues. I do want mine a little bit green. We still want to keep that magenta to pop the skin out. The red, we're just going to leave it as it is. And then the color tab, you have the shadow tones. So if you adjust the shadow tones, there's only two different colors here, which is blue and green. I definitely would like to see different colors in this plugin tool. I think it'd be pretty nice. This plugin could be like the all time saving grace in my opinion. I think this is a great way to to shortcut it to also to also create these film looks on the go. I'm gonna go to halation here. Yeah you can adjust the highlight colors. It's really interesting how really interesting it messes with just two different colors. You know if you're pulling this way you have a little bit you have like like a very blue-ish color you have a yellow color and I think it really accommodates for the kind of look that Dehancer is promoting. I would say the film grain is extremely strong. Like if I'm pulling it all the way to 100, it's super strong. It does really promote that nostalgic feel and film like. In the film grain, you also have different profiles your 8mm ISO 50, and you're, you're also, you have your 16, 35s. This part is pretty cool the halation effect. The halation effect is very, very subtle. It's not too much, not to less, it's just right. Just scroll here, closer to her face. Amplify it all the way up, and there it is. You have the inhalation effect. You also have your bloom effect. For me, I'm not going to use it because this is like a talking head video, so I'm not going to use it. You also have your film damage, enable that. And you can see how damaged it is right here. Your film breathing is pretty cool too. I think this is a neat effect, especially if you're doing some sort of highlight or a nostalgic fill. Like you can definitely get lost in this in a good way where you are constantly trying new things and messing with the futures. So I would say I would say this is definitely a pretty cool plugin. Definitely it's like a one-stop pro shop rather than just 
going to a different third party and buying like just the LUT and you go over here and you're buying something else to accommodate that to put, put them together. You also have your monitor, it shows the false colors, that's pretty cool. You also have your output. And this total impact is pretty much the opacity of the whole plugin. That is it for this video review. Uh, let me know what you guys think and I do think that this plugin is a game changer. I'm act I'm really enjoying it. Like, I love it because I didn't even need, need to go and use different ones for this. And you can get creative with it however you want. And it's definitely important to set your nose properly and make sure that your timeline is set properly. So y'all let me know down in the comments what you think. If you are interested guys, I'm going to go ahead and put a link down below in the description. Go ahead and check out Dehancer, go download it, try it for two weeks to see if you like it. If you don't, it's not a big deal. But if you do like it, guys, there's so many ways you can use this to your liking. And it's going to change your game. So yeah, let me know down in the comments, guys. And I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Why did you fight? I fight because I... I know it sounds dumb, but I feel like a fighter is just who I am. Like since I was a child, like this is all that I've thought about. Um, so in my head, there was really never an alternative plan. It was never like, oh, I could go to law school or I could be a doctor. I could do this. It was always fighting. So I think I put a lot of my identity into fighting, um, which can be detrimental. I think it, like obviously something could happen where I could never fight again. Um, but. That's just kind of who I am. I, when I think of me, I'm, I'm a fighter.